Yeah, let's start with uh, football on today's edition of the Sportsman Zone. The VAR audio for Newcastle's controversial winner in their 1-0 triumph against Arsenal on November 4 was released by Professional Game Match Officials Limited on Tuesday. Let's hear it. Now, all good. Potential offside. Chess. Yep. Chess got instinct. Nothing. Still good. Checking that that is outside. Stay in, it, stay in. It. Still in, still in, still in. Potential, potential ball it. out of play. Yeah. Check it. Out. Wait, on for no, decision. no, no. No check, no check. Andy Mads. Let Wait, me Stu, can you can confirm Chango. your on-field decision, please? Whoa, OK. Mads, on-field decision. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me talk to the air. Give me space. Mads, on-field, give me space. Mads, on-field decision is goal. The ask on the pitch is for ball out, play on the goal line. Yep, confirmed. Okay. Confirm, Stuart, checking on field decision of goal. Okay, so I'm going to need to check. Um, from I've, I've cleared that one, yep, I've cleared yep. that one. So I'm interested in. I might need to go GLT, mate. Have you got a GLT yeah, camera there? It's not going to be in there. We can go to this one. Okay, okay yep, that's fine. I'll come back to you. I'm 30, normal contacts on the challenge on the back post. Okay, okay, stop it at that point. Yeah, I know they're going to. They're Thank you. Gone, Thank you. Him, so, Stu, can you have a look at this as well before we go check the goal? For me, I've got no conclusive evidence that, no. that, ball, that that ball is out. No, I, no I agree. Evidence. They said no, I, is there not a goal? It's too, wait a minute. No, two. I was going to say, you can't go on that angle, no, although no, no, it no, looks out, you've got the curvature, got curvature of the ball. The ball. No, Just one second then. So, go two frames forward, the ball is already back in place, stroke on line. Two frames forward. That's there we go. Though. So, that's fine. So, run that through, please. Right, now you've got the challenge on the back post. Yep, so I'm going to check that. So, run, running that through, please. So, yep. looking for offside position, first of all. No offside position. Okay. I'm now needing to check a potential foul on Gabriel. So, have you got high behind for me, please? Yep. That's great. Just run that through a little. Stu, yep. we've... Stu, we've cleared the uh, ball staying in. We're now checking for the back post challenge, mate. From the other end, which might be better. Yeah, okay, thank you. There could be a handball I, don't, well. I don't see a specific foul on Gabriel. I see two hands on his back, but I don't see anything of a push that, that warrants him flying forward like that. Right, there's a potential for, as Stuart said, there's a potential for handball, but it's not the okay. goal scorer. No, it's not the goal handball. scorer, and it's not deliberate from anywhere. So, right, Stuart, I need you to look at the screen for me, mate, please. Yeah, so I'm seeing that the ball comes off um, Joe Linton with no specific foul there. Can you just confirm that the player's onside as well when it comes off Joe Linton? Back to him. Just delay, we just got to just check him, mate. Have you, so got, a Joe, have you got a high behind? Wait a Sorry, mate. So, Joe yeah, Linton, so can we confirm that's off Joe Linton on the point of contact on Joe Linton? Just looking for a better angle to find the point of contact yep, for thank you. Thank you. I'd say and then we just need to check that he's in an onside position I, and then if we're running through. I agree, uh, don't forget I'm you got the keeper, he's out as well. To find a point of contact here. Okay, okay. Just keep going down. Keep roll Happy that forward. Then. Forward. Roll that forward. Yeah. Okay. Forward. So. Yep. Okay. So he's going to be off Joe Linton's hip potentially. Yeah. Let me just check. Yep. Tell Stu that we're just checking okay. the offside position now. Stu, we're yep. now checking offside position okay. for the goal scorer. Yep. Say okay. Yep. We're just checking offside position for the goal scorer now, mate. So we've cleared the foul as okay, well. Okay. So roll that one one turn forward. I, I, so are you happy that, that is the, that's going to be the, the best point of contact that we've got? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we might need to go and check the offside, check the offside now. It's an important goal for both teams, we get it right. Okay, so he's clearly on. Looking at, looking at Gab, Gabriel's body position there, his shoulder. Yeah, but you've got the second rear most, he's the goalkeeper. Yeah, that's right, yeah. First, if that helps. So now you've got to decide, but... Because you've got, I don't know where the ball is because the ball's being hidden from Joel yeah. Linton here. So you don't know yeah. where the ball is. Yeah. And you can't, you've got, got no, no conclusive, conclusive evidence. evidence of Gordon being ahead of the ball. Um, so yeah. it, so we, we, the reverse we, angle that you've got, yeah. you've not got any opportunity there of where the ball So yeah. with, with that, in so my opinion, to award the goal. I think you okay. have to so award we're going the goal, check on, the, on, the, on the goal. I, I agree. Do you want to put the net first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Roll that through. Just delay, delay. Ball then goes in, that's fine. Okay, so we check it on field decision of goal, yeah? Confirmed. So it's Mads, we're confirming the on field decision of goal. On field decision of goal. Mads, confirming that I can award the goal. Yeah. Confirmed award the goal, restart with a kickoff. Yeah, goal confirmed, and the Newcastle fans went wild. As we can remember, though, Arsenal's head coach, Mikel Arteta, was not happy with the decision.
embarrassing it's an absolute disgrace that's what it is a disgrace there's no there's so much at stake we've put in so many hours to compete at the highest level and you cannot imagine the amount of messages we've had saying this cannot continue it's embarrassing it's not acceptable there's too much at stake i don't want to be in the hands of these people i don't know how to feel i'm wasting my time we're wasting our time it's difficult enough to compete against Newcastle. They are a really good team, but we have to talk about how the hell this goal stood. It's an absolute disgrace. It was allowed. For more than one reason, it should not be a goal. I have been in this country for more than 20 years, and the officiating is nowhere near the level of the best league in the world. I feel sick. To be part of this i feel sick it's not a goal it's not a goal yeah in english class he probably would get a four out of ten because there was so much repetition from michael arteta but maybe it's made the point lance and mariah you saw the four and a half minutes worth of uh, footage and uh, hearing the audio from the VAR officials what do you make of the decision um, given what you have just seen? So for me, I will say I still found the audio to be very long, right? But I'm not trying to be one of those people that you can't please in the sense that if they take the time to make the decision, you have an issue with the length of time that they make. And then if they don't do the right thing and they don't go to the VAR to get a decision, then I complain about the fact that they didn't use the tools, um, the technology available. It was long though, four and a half minutes, I listened to all of it, it felt long. Now that aside, with regards to the goal, I felt as if putting all the audio didn't create any clarity in my mind. Maybe it's just me and I'd love to hear what Lance has, has to say because Lance, you have done commentary on a lot of football matches. I've never done commentary. I've analyze the situations but I've never sat in a commentary box and done that so to me I felt if I heard the audio I would get clarity and it would bring some sort of I'd be sure but I felt like the audio didn't do that for me well it didn't for me either and I just wonder about the deficiencies of the VAR application in the English Premier League because there's something called goal line technology that shows whether a ball is over a line or not over a line. Now, on the VAR study of the ball before the cross was made, it looked out to me, but I think that VAR and the level of technology should give a, a, a picture that makes it clear. The goal line technology, we, we have seen it so many times in different leagues and at the world levels. So even before the ball was crossed in for the, the ball to be scored, I, I had an issue there because it looked out for me. And for the VAR officials to be saying the arm resting on the Arsenal players back didn't look significant to have him propel forward in that way. I, I don't think I agree with that either because they were both going for the ball and uh, the player appeared to be shoved from behind. So I quite understand Arteta being upset. So you think that it should not have been a goal? So you um, think, yeah, given everything that you that saw... That I saw, yes. You think that the VAR official should have overturned the goal? I think so. And as I said, my first point of reference is goal line technology. What, what's gone with that? Yeah. Because there is technology but, but, that will show definitively yes. if a ball has gone over the line or not and, and not leave it to the VAR officials to be looking at the angle and saying we can't say from that angle. Goal line technology um, robs or takes away the burden of the, the, the officials to make that call. In the absence of that technology, though, for this specific case, mm. given what you saw, yeah. if you were in the position of the VAR officials, would you overturn that <laughs> on the basis that the ball had gone out of play? I guess I couldn't because at the angle that they were at, they weren't completely in line. Mm -hmm. So I understand them saying that, and I got this from them, that it may have looked out, but they couldn't say conclusively that it was out. Mm -hmm. So on what they saw, I guess I can't quarrel that they, you know, had to rule that 
the ball may have been in. And I it, saw it didn't look into me, though. But I saw a report from Howard Webb, yeah. and he said that it was the right decision as well, a former referee. Mm. Yeah, he, he is the referee's chief. And, and, you feel, <laughs> and you feel, Lance, that the foul or... The shove. <laughs> the shove. If it was a shove, because yes. the bar officials think it may not have been. On, on, on Gabriel, yeah. you feel that should have been called. It looked that way to me, yeah. Whereas I will say mm -hmm. that for the ball being out or not, yeah. given the angle that we saw, it would be hard for the VAR officials to say conclusively yeah. that the ball was in or out because the whole ball has to be over the line. The entire ball has to be over the line. It looked that way to me, but it wasn't conclusive. I would stick my neck out to say that I think our, um, Gabriel was shoved at the back. Mm. So I, 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 from that standpoint, I thought that was a fault. And you know, I have one more problem with them releasing this audio, right? Mm -hmm. Because my concern now is if there's always a disagreement, are you going to give every team that equal treatment? And that is my major issue with this entire situation. Yeah, th there's a problem with quote-unquote equal treatment, right? Because we're talking about different referees who may interpret aspects of the laws differently. Um, and so when it comes to equal treatment, for me, it's about looking at specific referees and how um, they go about making their decisions over time. That's yeah. the type of um, data that I am looking to see to make a determination if teams are getting, let's say, unfair calls or whatever the case might be. But you know what my biggest issue in all of this is? I mean, I can understand Mikel Arteta being upset, but I think for him to say that it is embarrassing and a disgrace, that's what I don't agree with. Because I think when you look at this, in, in my opinion, there is nothing conclusive to say that 100% this decision should have been overturned. And I think if you listen to that audio and you look at the images and you bring in 100 individuals and you ask them to vote, I feel you will get a split down the middle yeah. as to whether it should have been ruled out um, or it should have been allowed to stand. And that's why I can't agree with Arteta saying that it was a disgrace. I think this was an incredibly difficult decision to make. And on the issue of the, the line call, Lance, now I play tennis, right? And, and this happens in tennis quite a lot where you have controversy over line calls. And different individuals will see differently depending on the angle that they are at and the distance that they are away from the situation. And it's a similar thing with um, these angles, camera angles and so on. Unless you are at the perfect position in terms of being in line yeah, yeah. with the line, it's difficult to say from particular angles whether the ball has gone out or not. Which I think I they call it depth yes. um, perception yes. is what yeah. I think it's called. And because of that, I think that's why the officials were careful not to try and make a determination from the lone angle that Which they Which is why had. I left that one alone, that, yes. Ricardo. So, I, yeah. yeah, so for me... That decision, and sometimes it's not even about wrong or right, but that decision or that conversation or aspect of the conversation is, in my opinion, pragmatic on the part of the officials. Mm -hmm. As for the quote-unquote shove, personally, I did not see enough evidence to say that it was definitely a foul and should be overruled. Um, mm -hmm. What, what do they call it? What, what, what do the rules say? I mean, in the court of law, you would say beyond a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. Beyond uh, reasonable doubt. Beyond reasonable, reasonable doubt. doubt. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't think that was beyond reasonable doubt, mm -hmm. that it was definitely a shove. I think, mm -hmm. again... But was, was Gabriel airborne when contact was made? I am not sure. Can, can we see it again? Do because because I'm thinking for him to propel himself forward if yes. he's trying to fool he would have had to be grounded to, to, to push himself forward. I, I, I thought he was kind of airborne when he was shoved. And Let, I'm not this sure. This is the play. Let's look at it. Yeah, I don't think. And here's the problem again. So the early angles I don't think worked because I don't think you learned much from the early angles in terms of whether it was a fall or not. This is probably the best one. And even this one, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. I am not sure it's conclusive yeah, enough. But Ricardo and, and, and Morale, let's get into some physics here. Yeah. Yes. If you have your arm outstretched on a player like that, you must propel him forward. Your, your arm is outstretched and it's, re it, it's resting on him. Yeah. He, he has to be 
he has to tumble forward. And you know, even if you apply force or not, the fact that your hand is yeah, there, yeah, that's you'll what I'm saying. Forward. It doesn't have to be forceful. Yes. So that's that's my issue. So, so, I, so I, you're saying it does not have to be a forceful contact for it to be called a foul? In my opinion, no, because okay. you are taking away the advantage from the defender to try to reasonably get possession of a ball or, and gain or, advantage. or, head, or head the ball. And I just want to address what you mentioned about Arteta mm -hmm. and uh, your suggestion that you thought he was over the top in yes. saying this was embarrassing and so on. And maybe he was a bit, Ricardo, but you know what this comes down to? Mm -hmm. comes down to trust. There is okay. an issue now with trust. We saw what happened with the Klopp and the Liverpool VAR issue yes. some weeks ago. And this has become repetitive in English Premier League football. Yes. So Arteta can get away with comments like this because the average football fan no longer trusts what the VAR um, rulings and, come up and with. And by extension, and the referees. And neither do the coaches. Yes, yes. yes. So yes. I, think, I think this outburst is stemming from a lack of trust and confidence in how VAR is being utilized. I, I don't doubt that. Yeah, so, so I think that's part of the problem but, that we're having here. But, but again, I don't think that this is a disgraceful decision. The decision, <laughs> the decision that Liverpool got was a disgrace. Yes. That was embarrassing. Okay, okay. I don't know that this yes. specific decision was a disgrace okay. and was embarrassing yeah, which, which and, is was, what, and was what Arteta yeah. was making it yeah, out Which to is be. what I said to you just now, that I yeah. think I would agree with you that Arteta may have gone over the top, yes. may have stretched it a bit in, in his outburst. But there is a reason for it, and I think that is the but reason. He, he's fed up because he feels there is no trust in the system. Yeah. And because VAR officials are not being punished... They're getting away. In, ...in the way that they should. Darren England, the but VAR you official... But you, but you couldn't punish a VAR official for this, lads. No, no, but... I'm, no, but I'm because it is that. happening yeah. so often... Yes, yeah, that's, and... I, I, think, I think Arteta is frustrated. Remember now, Darren England, the VAR official from the Liverpool, they, yes. he, he and his panel got stood down for about two or three weeks. Yes. Which to me isn't and enough. You, you just admitted, Ricardo, that you thought that was a disgrace. Yes. This isn't a disgrace, yes. but that was a disgrace. So how then can you... Um, suggest that a disgraceful decision from Darren England and his VAR team with the Liverpool um, results in a three-week stand-down from, from officiating. They should have been barred yes. from being on the VAR panel for, for months. Yeah. For months. And, and that's an interesting point you make, right? And, and let me put it this way. We have to go to a break quickly. Yes. But let me put it this way. When a player gets... A red card, for example, I guess depending on the severity of the, 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 the infringement, the infraction, um, it may determine how long they are out for. Um, but you never really get more than three matches, do you? No. Wh which is really a three-week period. Yes, it was a disgraceful um, decision on the yeah. part of the VAR officials. Yeah. Um, but, 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 but their, 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 their but position... Months might be I know, pushing it, but, though. But, Ricardo, the difference for me yes. is that their position as administrators of the rules of the game yes. brings the integrity question in, okay. yes. into the game, Fair. and which to me is different from a player being reckless with attack. And because it and happens so often, yeah. the, the coaches are able to get away. Yeah. They're able to get away by saying these things because it is a build-up. It's not a one-off. Arteta will be punished for this, though, I think, because <laughs> you don't criticise officials yeah. in, in English football we have now to go, and, and get away with it. We yeah. have to go. Yeah. Our yeah. producer. We'll be back with more. <laughs>